This video file was recorded in Sabunji University during recitations for the CS204 Advanced Programming course as it was given in the spring semester of 2017. Hello everyone. Today's topic is about GUI, Graphical User Interface, GUI. You have seen that, you have been using that, but unfortunately up until now you couldn't program that. Let, let's see what it is about. But before going and programming and doing some GUI stuff, let me first show you how people worked like maybe 20 years ago or even more. So at the time when you were born, Windows was not like this. You didn't have Windows, so you can move the mouse, click, minimize, open, copy, paste, or whatever. What you had was the following. So here you had the command prompt, which was this guy, and here you printed some commands, gave, gave, gave some commands, inputted some commands to the system, and you get the proper reply. For instance, if you wanted to see the time, you just wrote time, and you get this output. You could have changed it, enter the new time, you could enter the new time. If you wanted to print the date, this is how you did it. Okay, if you wanted to see what, so here we are working at this di uh, directory, folder. So in, back at in that, that time for Windows NT it was called folder. Uh, the directory, the folder was called directory, so right now we are working at this guy, C users, C user. If I want to see what we have here, I just print this command, dir. Let me see whether the font is enough, okay, it's enough en enlarged. Now this is the content of my directory. If I wanted to change it to go one level up, you see I'm now C user, C user. Now I'm, I am in C users. If I wanted to go one level up, CD, I just printed two dots. Now I am at C. If I want to see what do I have at C, I just print dir. Okay? Now you see in C I have those uh, folders. Let me see whether it's the case. So I have extensions for Jitsu, Intel, blah, 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 whatever. <coughs> Let me see whether it is the case. Yes, it is. Extensions for Jitsu, Intel, everything is there. I've printed that. If I want to clear the, the window, I just print CLR or, I, okay, n never mind. It's a Linux command. Now, if I want to go to this folder, Windows, namely, if I want to go here, then what should I do is the following. CD. Windows, change directory in Windows, now I'm in C Windows. If I want to see what do I have inside, I print dir. Now this is what I have inside. Okay? So this is the reason why 20 years ago the CS department or CS branches, sciences were not so, so much spread. Because this is hard to do. Although CS guys still love to do this stuff, and I like this guy more rather than command, especially for simple cases, but when I'm dealing with uh, system administrating stuff. Usually, CS guys do this stuff also. But imagine, instead of Windows as we see it, if we had this stuff, it would have been much harder. Okay? So, the mouse, Windows, made the GUI, graphical user interface, made, that easy, made it easier for us. So, instead of writing time or date, we can see the time or date here. Okay? If instead of changing directories or files, folders, we can just navigate like this. Okay, instead of uh, copy pasting, if you want to copy one folder from one part to another part, from one, from one place to another pa pa place, you just use CP and let's say C or Windows and you copy to another place. You write, you leave an empty space and you write the other place where you want to copy the folder. If you want to make another directorium, just say make directorium, you write the name of the directorium and you make it and so on. Now you can do it very easily, create new, copy paste and so on. This is about the operating systems. What do you think, how can I exit this stuff? Now if I want to shut down my computer, I go start shut down. What about this stuff, what do you think? I don't have start shut down, I don't have the mouse at all because the mouse was invented actually in the 60s but it didn't, didn't have much of use up until like 20, 25 years ago. Approximately when you were born. It's the real boom of the CS. So, as we know it. How can I turn off my computer? I had to print the command exit. 
And this is for Windows. Linux had other commands. Okay. Now, we have seen many applications till now. They were usually, usually, so our topic for today is graphical user interface, GYU, GUI. Up until now, we did something like this, okay? But today we will see something like this for the first time. So this is a big change for you. Actually, not very much in terms of programming, but it's something new. Probably you have wondered how did I do my applications? How did I write them? So just imagine the, the following scenario when you prompt the user, ask the user to give three inputs, okay? And you say, okay, give me an input. So this is the system, the, your program, this is the user, and the user gives inputs, okay? Sometimes you might say, okay, choose one of those four. At least one, not more. Sometimes you say exactly one. Sometimes you say one or more. At least one or maybe two, three, four, something like that. So you have many problems, or in this case, when you prompt the user to give some input, you say give one input, okay, give the second input, give the third input, no, it's wrong, it's okay. This is very hard. But if we do it something like this, it's easier, right? You give one input here, one input here, one input here. The user presses give input and the system takes that. Okay, this is GUI. Today we are going to see that. Let me see what exactly we are going to do. I'm going to show to you a couple of examples. One of them is the, upper, the calculator. So we are going to write an application. Basically, we're going to program a calculator today. A simple calculator, not advanced one. So 21 plus 46. You see when I press plus, I went into the second box. When I press equal, I'm giving the result here. The result might be given with two digital points after the decimal point, with two digits, with three digits, or five digits. But it should be only one of them, okay? So I'm pressing this one, then I have three points after the decimal, three digits after the, after the decimal point. Here I have five digits after the decimal point. Let me do some other operation. Let's say 85 divided by seven. It's equal to this guy, because this one is pressed, okay? So just imagine if you had to write this stuff, and here you should care that the, your input is only digits. What if the user gives uh, character, punctual sign, semicolon, question mark? It makes no sense, okay? But with this stuff, with GUI, you force the user only to give the input that you want. That is acceptable. You don't have to check whether it's a string, whether it's a sign, a character, whatever. It's always going to be a digital, a, a digital character from zero to nine, okay? The operands, you might ask, okay, give me an operand. What if he gives you a question mark for an operand? It makes no sense. You force him to give one of those operands, okay? The same applies for operand two. Then you might ask the user, okay, how many digits you want after the decimal point? He might say, I want eight digits. Makes no sense. Or he might give three and five. No, you should exactly choose one. He might not choose anyone. He doesn't choose anything, which is wrong. With this guy, you, you, make him for you force him to choose exactly one. Not more, not less. Okay? Which is, you can do it with, with console-based applications, as we've seen it so far, but it's harder. It's easier, at least for the user. It's much more easier and much more intuitive to use this guy. So this is our first application that we're going to see. We see some controls here. You see here, um, if I try to give some input on my own, I cannot do it. I cannot write. I'm pressing here numbers, characters, but I cannot do it. The only way I can give input to operands is by pressing those buttons. But we will see another application. Namely, it is this one. Mm, okay. And here, you see I have here title name, those are labels, this is text, and I have, I have here a drop-down list. So I'm choosing exactly one of them, but in this way. So mister, now I can give input here. I should give my name, and I'm giving my name. Then I'm giving my surname here, I can write here. Previously here I couldn't write, but here I can write. Then I instead here, 
I could choose only one of those three guys, but here I can choose many. So, good morning and good evening, let's say. And I add them to list, and this is what I get. Good morning, Mr. blah, blah, blah. Good evening, Mr. Okay, because I selected both of them. Sometimes I want to add something else. You see, this guy is not selected. It's disabled, basically. If I press, if I check this button here, it's going to be enabled. And now I'm choosing one of those guys. Only if this guy is checked. So let's say I want to add uh, bon voyage and good night. And I've added it. So bon voyage and good night, blah, blah, blah. And you see this guy? I have this scroll bar, the horizontal one. If I add more text, the vertical one is going to appear here. So let me add the same text basically again, again, again. You see this guy appeared. If I uncheck this guy, I don't have this. This is again disabled. So this is GUI. You can do it with console-based applications, but it's better to do it like this. However, for the programmers, it's harder, much harder to do that. Okay? Only to write, to draw this guy here, you might need maybe 20 lines of codes. In order to draw, in order to program its behavior, you might need maybe 100 lines of codes. It, make, it makes it harder for you, but this was 10 years ago. So when I was your age, approximately, younger, uh, we programmed, I did some GUI stuff in Java, but we did it in a very hard way, okay? We will see today we are going to drag and drop those controls, but at that time we didn't have the proper IDE, interface development environment like Visual Studio or others, so we had to program them on our own. Here, when you drag and drop something, it's going to be programmed immediately, automatically. You just make some changes at the code. But at that time, it wasn't like that. Still, GUI is very hard. It's much more easier than it used to be, but it is very hard. However, I want to emphasize some things. Namely, what are the different uh, application controls, let me call them, that we see here. We see this guy, title, name, surname. This is text. And this is a class, this is, so this is one control. Those boxes is, is another control. Those are different instances of the same class. This guy and this guy are the same class. Okay, this is something else. This is a button. So those are different classes, like kind of variables for GUI applications. What do we have there? Let's go with this one. This is C button. There, those are all classes. If you use Java, it will be J button but we are using C, so this is C button. What do we have here? We have private members, public members. I'm going to write the public members. For the public members, we have variables and we have functions, member functions. But here, they're not called like that. They're called, called as properties and events. Again, properties are uh, member variables and events are functions, member functions, okay? For instance, one of the functions that I have here is click. When I click this guy, I'm going to program something. Namely, when I click this guy, I enter this text here. And we're going to see how I'm going to do that. What else do I have? I have those two boxes, which is another class. The name of the class is cedit. Those are for input. In Visual C Sharp, I think they're called edit box. What else do I have? Those texts here, they're called label sometimes, but here we are going to call them C static. So properties and events. I have the C label, C static actually, because it's a static text. It shouldn't change, but sometimes we'll make it change, okay? These guys never change. We just put them there. But they should be programmed. So those have their own properties as well as events. What else do I have? What about this one? This one and this one are the same class. They are called combo box. The name is C combo box. We will see the properties of those guys. 
we will see how we are going to add the data. You remember Mr., Mrs., whatever over here, bon voyage, bonjour, whatever. We'll see how we will add them. So we have the properties, we have the events, the functions. What else do we have? So remember, static text, the button, the edit for input, the combo box, sometimes it is called as drop-down list, because the list drops down when I press the button. Also, what else do I have? These guys. What's their name? They're checkboxes, but actually they're instances of C button. I'm going to use C check. But um, a kind of they come from the C button. Okay? We have this one also. This is called the list box. So C check, properties, events. We are going to write them when I'm writing the code. Uh, C list. We have the properties of C list and we have the events. What else? Let's go to this guy here. Uh, did we see those guys? Yes, those are buttons. Did we see those? Yes. Those are input boxes. See edit. What didn't we see? Those guys. Check boxes. They're not the same as those check boxes. They're, those are called radio buttons. Uh, we will write them as C button. Oh, okay, radio button. C radio button, but they are kind of C button with some restrictions. Namely, only one of them can be selected. So C radio. Let me write here button and button here. For the checkboxes, multiple of checkboxes can be checked. For the radio button, only one. Exactly one. So properties and events. I suppose this is it. Okay. Now, you might ask what about the integers, the string, the double, the float, variables or types? Yes, we have them here also with some restrictions. Namely, we have here the C string class, which is used only for GUI. This is also a class. I'm not going to give everything about it. I'm going, we are going to see them for, through programming. They, are, they have some properties here. Maybe I will write them. Furthermore, we have some conversion functions which we are going to use. And I'm going to show them in a while. Those conversion uh, functions are the following. OK, if you want to convert integer to string, this is how you do it. Interesting part here is this stuff. T, then you put something. If you have here percent %d, then the integer, this is for integer, OK? So, OK. Percent %d is for integers. Percent %u uh, is for unsigned. The problem is that we didn't do some C programming stuff. This comes from C programming language. If you know them, if you knew it, it would have been easier for you. F, for percent F, is for float, and so on. We will see them. I know it might look strange to you, but we will see them in a while. It shouldn't bother you too much. So, if I want to convert the integer to C string, this is how I do it. If I want to convert C string to integer, this is how I do it. This is a function uh, T to integer, string to integer. This is how I convert unsigned to integer. We're not going to use that. The only function that we are going to use are probably this one and this one. We will see them in examples. Uh, the others I don't think that we are going to use. Eventually this one. If I want to convert the C string to double, this is how I do it. Okay, so this is C string parameter, the function the double to uh, string to float to double, and I assign the value that is going to be returned from this function to this variable. Okay. Now